Okay, so let's start with a demo first. Before going into Salesforce, we have to first understand what the business Salesforce does, right? So I guess some of you might be aware, but for the generic uh, purpose, let's let's overview all these parts. Okay. So first, content what we will go through in this session is we will first see what is a Salesforce CRM, wherein we will introduce you to the cloud platform. What is cloud computing, and then we will move into what is what Salesforce does exactly. Okay. Then we will quickly browse through some of the products which Salesforce is working on, and then we will browse through the course content what we will be covering in our future classes okay a brief overview of that and then we will do one project demo followed by what are the prospect of the salesforce career if you choose salesforce as a career in your uh, you know life so what will be the job prospect and what are the what are the future of that okay and then at the end we will go with the salesforce certification what type of certification you need to do okay so let's start with salesforce crm now before we start with salesforce as i mentioned we will first see what is cloud computing so if we go by the definition it states cloud computing is a way to access information and application online instead of having to build manage and maintain them on your own hard drive or servers so previously before the cloud computing feature came into picture what was happening is the clients or the customers will be or the companies who uses like CTS, Cognizant, Google, anybody. So what they will be using is they will be downloading the software as an end user. If we have to use their feature, we will be downloading the software. We will be installing it and then we will running it, right? Like how a Java platform or C++ platform works. So we have to download some kind of software to run those programs and compile the code. Because coding part can only be... Uh, like it has to be first converted into a machine language and from that machine language we have to like we will be writing the code in our uh, C++ or Java language and then that has to be converted into a machine language. So that is that part of code needs to be co compiled using a compiler and for that you need to download certain kind of software. And even if you have to you know uh, do your code it will be stored in your server or the hard drive where you are working on whether it is a laptop or a computer. So those parts you need to do. Now, after the cloud computing came into picture, it's basically managing all these softwares, managing all this data storage into a single server. And that server was uh, is being stored or is being utilized by the companies who are providing you that service in their own locations. So for example, if I tell you, we are in our modern day world, what we are doing as a real time example, we will be using Netflix, we will be using Amazon Prime, right? So that is also a kind of software. So in that kind of software, what we will do, we will just watch the TVs, right? Previously, what we used to do, we used to buy CDs or we used to use, rent a CD and, you know, uh, watch movies or series, something like that. But now we will be using the feature of cloud computing where the, all those kind of uh, features or these uh, movies will be stored in their Netflix server or Amazon server. And then we will be, utilizing those uh, storage device by subscribing and then seeing it from our end. So we don't need to, uh, we don't need to uh, store those kind of uh, records, right? Now, another way of looking at it is, let's say Google Photos or Google Drive. I hope if most of you have used that. So basically we, have, we can store our uh, documents or store our photos into that particular uh, Google Drive where we will be creating our Gmail account and with that we will get some certain kind of space right where we will upload it and store it so in an essence we are not storing those features in our in our uh, system or in our laptop but we are stored we are you know renting it out as a as a uh, feature to get those things sorted out now what are the advantage of that so one of the advantages First of all, we, we are not utilizing our own space. Second of all, the security becomes more enhanced because since the companies who are providing you with the storage feature or the use of that software, that will be taken care by the company itself. So we don't need to uh, think about whether we, are, we have to, you know, uh, whether the securities will be breached or something like that. So that will be taken care by the company itself. And the third one was, which is the most useful one is, we can access our data from anywhere in the, wherever we, we are having the access to our account. 
let's say for example we were giving of google photos right so if we are storing it in a cloud computer uh, in, a, in a google uh, drive so we will have we can access it from anywhere in the world where we have access to our account where there is an internet so that is all in all is what is cloud computing so if i have to summarize it it's basically the same feature what we have used it previously but from a single source of truth for what that means is there will be a server particular server and from there we will fetch our data and utilize that particular feature okay now if you see it's fast efficient and secure that's what we have uh, talked about now coming to the second point what is crm right so crm if we go by the full form it is customer relationship management and if it is telling it is a technology for managing all companies relationship and interaction with customers and potential customers so how you whenever we are running a business for any type of business the main intention of having a business is to have a good customer base if you can manage your customers effectively if you can manage your customers efficiently that is the way you retain your customers and that is the way it will grow the business will grow so if the the efficient way of running a business is how you how you manage the customers and that is the, the tools or the software which provides you that feature which provides you certain kind of functionalities to you know make it efficient the process to be efficient that is known as customer relationship management okay so this is about crm now coming to salesforce so what is salesforce salesforce is a crm based cloud computing platform so what does that mean it means salesforce provides you with the features or the platform or the software whatever you talk about in order to the whole intention of it is to manage your customers efficiently how whether whether you are doing a you know marketing or whether you are you are you try, try to enhance the sales process or any services after you have uh, you know uh, created the product so many features are provided by salesforce with the whole intention of making the customer experience smoother or to manage your customers efficient and salesforce does that itself and it is also a cloud based that means you don't need to install anything in your system you can access everything you can write your code you can do uh, you know uh, avail the features of the salesforce from the internet itself so if i go by the definition what it is telling salesforce is a cloud based software company that provide businesses with tools that helps them find more prospect close more deals and provide a higher level of service to their customers okay any questions till this point what is salesforce like if you have any questions you can ask me <coughs> okay so tell about your, your crm sir yeah sorry the big tell about please tell about crm sir so crm is customer relationship management so let's say i have built one product okay Let's say it's an Amazon product. Let's take that example itself. We have uh, Amazon has created the product called Amazon Prime, right? Now, for them, who are the customers? We, as the end users who are subscribing to that Amazon Prime, is our customer, right? So, if we are if we are facing some issues with the CRM, uh, sorry, with the Amazon Prime, what we will do? We will call the Amazon customer care, right? And they will be dealing with our issues. maybe we have raised some past issues and then we are dealing it so that way if we if the agent or the person who is answering our calls will be able to effectively answer or provide us the solutions that is something which will retain that will retain our customer base you can understand it with another example very well so every one of you might have been using flipkart or amazon for shopping or mintra for shopping right so what we do if we are getting some product which is not um, as per the description or if there are certain nooks in that product now we will call the customer care now the customer care will tell us that like we will get our details like from where we are calling they will ask us also right from where you are calling like what is your uh, registered number all those things that sometimes it is asked sometimes it is not asked now just think about it if i am calling the customer care and they are asking me a lot of questions so what is your name so what is uh, what is uh, your uh, account registered with 
so sir what are the products you have purchased so if they start asking those many questions it will be irritating irritating for us right because we are just calling to raise our concerns not to provide our history of all the details whatever we have purchased or what registered number what otp you are getting all these things is not our concern as an end user we just want to raise the concern and get that resolved now if a good customer relationship management tool will provide the end user, uh, the the persons who are answering our calls with the details already fetched so when whenever we are calling they will already have a detail popped up in their screen stating that this is this number this is his uh, registered number this is his name this is the product for which he is calling so they won't be asking you certain question and they will simply tell you okay sir you have called for this uh, this clothing what is the problem please tell me so if they tell us the problem we will just uh, like they will be uh, noting it down and they will they might resolve it that time or they will tell you have got a confirmation message and you will get this is the tracking id and you will get the details right so that is a more efficient way of handling a customer rather than getting the details all together from the customers their history everything and then providing maybe some kind of solutions right so the way any tool which manages their customers efficiently is a tool which will grow their business is it clear yes sir salesforce also yeah salesforce is one of such tools which helps in customer relationship uh, enhancing the customer experience now there are many segments whenever when you are talking about a business there are many segments of a business like when you are when you have created one product okay that product can be anything you can take any product uh, in your daily life like as i mentioned right custom amazon google uh, facebook then uh, instagram mintra all these are products as such we are utilizing it as an app but it is a product at the end of the day so when whichever whichever product is being managed efficiently so that is uh, that the, the efficiently in the sense customers from a customer's point of view that will only grow the business now i was talking about business having many aspects right so one of the aspect is once we build a product we have to sell it out sell it out to the customers so uh, what is the sales process how you manage the sales process efficiently that is one of the part second is once you have once it has been purchased by a customer the services which is provided post purchase right like um, as i was talking about the flipkart example so after you purchase the product from flipkart how it manages if you are raising some concerns that is service now the third part is marketing so before you launch a product you have to market that product or if you have a product already and if you are enhancing on that product how you market that this is the most efficient uh, product which you will get in the market because there are multiple competition for a single feature right now the way a business markets their product will only enhance their business and beat the competition so how to manage a market before launching the product that is one part fourth part is based there are multiple parts on a business i was just trying to give you an overview so with all these features salesforce is building some products out of it that means for sales sales cloud is there for service service cloud is there for marketing marketing cloud is there so all this, there are multiple products around 20 such products are there as of now in this current ecosystem where salesforce provides out of the box functionality that means if you don't have to create anything you just purchase that and you can build on top of that if you want if your business needs something specific which is not provided let's say by salesforce then you can build even on top of that okay and salesforce uh salesforce main mantra is we will be doing less coding and utilize the point and click functionality so we will see what that means in our demo session but it's basically you don't have to write that much code you can utilize if you understand the salesforce ecosystem very well then you can most of the requirements or the the features which you will be creating for your business can be done from point and click functionality like you will just hover over one place and you will write it down and that salesforce from the back end will create it for you okay so that is what salesforce is any questions after this okay so we will be going with the 
certain products we will see certain products of salesforce now before we learn about the salesforce ecosystem uh, like when we hear about the salesforce ecosystem we hear like you must have heard certain as i was talking earlier also right we we hear certain different different clouds are there like sales cloud service cloud community cloud or experience cloud marketing cloud cpq einstein industry cloud all these things so we hear multiple clouds which are provided by salesforce so let's take you through some background or the history of how salesforce has developed with us so when salesforce come in came into picture in the year 1999 first they have created this sales cloud if you see in the top uh, left corner the sales sales one right so that is sales cloud so they have created a sales cloud which was just a software on the cloud when i talk about cloud just think of it as a server or a hard disk which is stored in certain location okay that is managed by salesforce okay so sales cloud they have created in 1999 and what was the main intention of that it's to help them manage the sales cycle from anywhere around the world okay so if if somebody is sitting in india or somebody is sitting in usa both can utilize and if they are having a same company so both can utilize that sales cloud feature and uh, coordinate between them and increase the sales process okay so that was the selling point and that was the first time when cert something like this came from on premise to cloud application on premise means where you have to download the software and use it like that. okay so that was in 1999 so after that uh, going forward some year later around 2006 i believe apex came into picture so what is apex apex is a programming language like java c++ c those are programming language apex is a programming language which was developed by salesforce to write code on that so as i was telling right so salesforce will provide certain uh, doc certain features but what what if you need something specific to your business which is not there so you can write a code on top of that so that language is known as apex and with that came another framework which is which is the user interface framework which is known as visual force okay so visual force is another ui framework like in web application you will be writing html right so that is a ui framework similar to that salesforce has also created a ui framework called visual force so that is one of a programming language and then around 2008 or 9 i believe service cloud came into picture okay so what is it what does it do as i mentioned once you when some business sells a product how the services are provided to the customer so it's basically about case case management ticket management so whenever you are calling a flipkart and raising your concern they will create a ticket for you right whether that is called a ticket or it is called a case or it is called something else everything at the end of the day it's the it's the concerns which we are raising that they are providing us with a tracking device okay so it's about managing the cases and other service related features now around 2012 it came into marketing cloud okay so just imagine or think of it first first the sales came into picture then the programming language how to develop on top of that then service cloud came into picture then marketing cloud came into picture around 2012 okay now marketing cloud is not something which salesforce has developed it is not a home grown application so what salesforce did it they have acquired two three different application like one of them was pardot which is a different company so they have acquired two three different applications of companies and from there they have made it as marketing cloud and after that around 2014 i believe community cloud or experience which is written here right experience so experience cloud or community cloud that has been created now what does it do it's basically managing large group of people like employees partners who are partnering with you so all these things and then another framework came into picture okay so if you remember i told you visual force is one of the framework and apex is the language now around 2014 they have created another ui framework which is known as lightning framework previously it was called classic okay and now they have switched to lightning so what is a lightning framework again lightning framework is not a framework which is open source so salesforce lightning framework as it is is a proprietary framework but salesforce made it open source open source means anybody can write code on top of that framework and uh, enhance their business so what is the main difference between a uh, classic and lightning 
it's basically the uh, in a visual force page it was more of a page centric so if you open any html page or any web page it's basically a page which you are seeing right at the front end now whenever any details was entered by the customers or any functionalities was being done in that page it was more of a it is going the more the data as it is going from the page to the server and then again fetching the details okay so that is like a page framework so and the lightning which was developed it was more of a component centric framework or the component centric model so let's say if i have a page and in that page i have certain different different components and that components components if you can think of it as mini pages okay just uh, for the simplicity purpose just think of it as a mini page they are interacting with each, with each other and then uh, providing you with the result now what is the difference or what is the advantage of doing this you can ask right what is the advantage of having the whole page data being sent to server and then moving it back to sales uh, moving it back to the ui rather than doing from a component level one of the advantages the component level framework whatever you have you will be creating that can be utilized into different different pages the reusability increases okay and the second most important part is the performance so every time whenever you are entering something on a component level framework that is not being sent to the server as it is most of the things are done on the browser level and from the browser level uh, you will get the features and at the end if you need something to fetch from database or save into the database database when i talk about it's basically the hard disk where you are storing the data okay and this hard disk or the database is something which the company manages so i'm just reiterating the same thing so yeah so that is what improves the performance and this performance improvement can be most noticeably seen in the mobile device so salesforce has their own mobile application like salesforce for app so there you will see the enhancement of that performance so it's basically about the performance improvement where it moves from classic to light so i will show you the uh, environment which i'm talking about just keep in mind when i'm showing you the demo you will get to know. okay now after this came lightning web component which is the new era framework what they are using so previously even that is also lightning web component and the lightning component which i was talking about previously both are similar where they are feature using the uh, component level driven architecture but what is the main difference with lwc or lightning web component is basically improving the web standards so if you have a uh, if you have a browser that browser keeps on changing with the going time right they will have their they will increase their standards how to improve the browser performance all these things so that is in order to maintain that particular standard they are uh, they switch to LWC. Okay, so Lightning component was a proprietary framework, and LWC is more aligned to the web standard, which is known as ECMAScript solution. You can Google it out later, but it is basically the ECMAScript standard they are following. It. Okay, so this is an overview of the history of the products. Okay, now let's look at each of these products. Certain products I have just framed it here for your understanding, and uh, just browse through it. So sales cloud sales cloud is specifically designed to streamline and optimize sales process and power sales team and enhance customer interaction. So if you see the diagram, there are contact management, lead management. So what is contact? Contact is basically the person who is a customer, who is the point of contact for that business. That is a contact. So how you manage that contact lead management lead leads are something who have shown interest in your business, but they are not. They have not purchased it. Okay. So if I see, uh, let's say, uh, in, in real estate market, if a flat is being launched or an apartment is launched, they will they will market it out, right? Now, once I show interest and call them, I'm asking about the square feet rate and everything. So for them, we are as a lead, and they will follow up with us to understand whether we actually want it or not, right? So the managing the lead is something uh, which is known as lead management. Now there are certain features which helps in utilizing or making it efficient process making it efficient now account management if you see opportunity so these are all parts of the businesses which are uh, utilized from a sales cloud feature uh, to improve the performance now what are the benefits if you see increased opportunities opportunities in the sense increasing the, um, the the conversion rate from a lead to an account so the revenues which are coming 
the profits which are coming from that business so it increases that accurate forecasting forecasting means seeing the uh, history of that customer where how much time they have called us or how much time what are the different different uh, places they have shown interest and some ai driven architecture from the back end so salesforce helps the business who is utilizing the salesforce for the sales cloud will make accurate forecasting about where this business can go so let's say i have created one a software and how it how that particular software the competitors how they are doing and how yours will be improved so all these things will be managed by salesforce and provide you with an accurate forecasting and third of course is streamlining the business process okay and fourth this as it is if you are if you have streamlined the business process it will anyhow increase the productivity okay so this is all about sales cloud a overview of sales now service cloud service cloud is a cloud based customer service and support platform designed to help businesses deliver exceptional customer experiences manage service interactions and resolve inquiries quickly okay so if you see on the diagram there are case management activities cti you don't have to understand all these things but these are certain products which are or the features which are provided in service cloud to manage the services more better okay now third one is experience cloud okay so experience cloud formerly known as community cloud is a powerful tool within salesforce ecosystem that enables business to create brand and interactive online communities like if we are if we have um, if you have seen any courses right or if you have gone like let's say visual uh, visual path is a is a community right so whenever you are joining our courses you become part of that community and we will interact with each other having the q and a sessions and you can interact with even with your peers who are who are working or who are studying with you together so that is like a community now from a business standpoint let's say if somebody is i have let's say i have created one product okay now that product i only have not created some partners have also shown interest and they are utilizing my product to enhance their businesses okay so let's say for example flipkart i'm just taking one example flipkart has taken salesforce as a platform to enhance their business so what for from salesforce perspective Flip, flipkart becomes the customer google is utilizing the salesforce for maintaining their crm so from salesforce perspective they are partners so how partners will interact with each other how the external user or the users who are coming to the website for the first time how they will interact with each other like if you go to any website you will find certain faqs already written some comments being already shared between each other like how you go to facebook and write comments and interact with your friends or the um, relatives right so they are like the interacting with each other without involvement of facebook they are just utilizing facebook as an uh, as a platform so those are uh, customers so how each of them interact with each other or how to utilize that uh, you know platform to enhance their business that is what experience cloud does okay now what are the benefits partner collaboration so if there are multiple partners partner means who are utilizing the platform to enhance their business those are only partners now how the partner collaboration happens how security securing access securing access means the security feature which i was talking about earlier so that security is being taken care by salesforce you as a, as a business man i don't have to uh, think about the security features okay that that will be taken care by salesforce now third is enhanced engagement so how to engage between each other uh, uh, with peers or customers or their partners so that is uh, enhancing that uh, engagement and fourth one is self service support self service support means as the name suggests if you have some knowledge articles or if you have some kind of you know uh, faq section so those will automatically answer most of the question which customers might be facing and if that doesn't help then they will come to the uh, to their services or call them so that is what experience cloud manages fourth one is the marketing cloud now as i mentioned marketing cloud is basically to help business create manage and deliver personalized marketing campaigns to their target audiences and what are the benefits multi channel campaigns segmentation so these are all parts of the marketing uh, you know uh, feature segmentation and targeting so which audience to target so some product i might have built only for the youth 
between 20 to 30 okay or something from the teenagers between uh, less than 20 age so how to how to target the audience that will be helped by the marketing cloud third one is personalized customer engagement so if you are going to any website and you are seeing some generic um, generic interaction is happening between that particular uh, page then that is not good for a, from a marketing standpoint you have to showcase the customer what he needs to see or why he came to that product right so that is how personalized market, customer engagement works and fourth one is data driven insights that means if you are marketing some products what is the data or what is the history of that particular feature tells about the market so if you are creating some shopping let's say in future you are creating some uh, software which deals with um, the, the clothes okay you are you are selling some clothes so what is that market tells you about how much is the percentage of the market growth, market growth happens which segment of people buys it more so all this data driven so the data which is already there in the internet that will be taken by salesforce and provide you with the more insights on top of it. that will help in enhancing the uh, business fourth one is the industry cloud now industry cloud is specifically again this is not a salesforce uh, salesforce is basically have not created it but acquired a company which was known as velocity okay so what they do is they will not provide you with the like sales it's not about a business specific cloud it's from a industry specific okay so previously as i mentioned sales service experience those are all from a business standpoint some of the segments of the business but from an industry standpoint, if you are, let's say, if you have to create some application for a healthcare industry, for a hospital, then you need to have an understanding of the healthcare, right? How it works, what are the uh, inputs which is needed, all these things. So that is something which is taken care of by the industry cloud. So again, this is something which Salesforce has acquired uh, from Velocity. Previously, it was known as Velocity. So after the acquisition, it is known as industry cloud. So if you go by the definition, what it tells, industry cloud refers to a specialized type of cloud computing solution that caters to the specific needs, requirements, and challenges of a particular industry. Okay, what are the benefits? It is specialized functionality for each of the businesses. You will get industry expertise on top of that, and it will follow the compliance and regulation for each of those industry. Like an ins insurance industry will have its own compliance and guidelines. That's a similar goes for a healthcare. Need not be both are same, right? The both businesses or both industries are different, so they will have its own compliance and regulation that can be taken care from a uh, that you don't have to research it out and everything that will be provided by Salesforce. And if you go by the diagram, if you see government cloud, health cloud, education, energy, manufacturing, so all these things uh, industries are being taken care by the industry cloud. Okay, and fifth one is the einstein ai cloud so einstein ai cloud like as you know nowadays um, ai is the new boom right everybody is talking about artificial intelligence so salesforce previously before this boom happened salesforce already had started creating this einstein cloud which is a comprehensive artificial intelligence platform integrated with salesforce different products like if you are using sales service communities whatever we talked about earlier and some other products also if you are utilizing it AI provides a more enhanced version on top of that. It's basically you will integrate AI with another product and then you will make that particular uh, judgment. Okay. Now, what are the benefits? Benefits are predictive insights, recommendation, automation, sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis means how is the sentiment going on in the market right now? Like that. And if you see the products of the analytics cloud, it's the uh, the commerce cloud, community cloud, Einstein, service cloud, Einstein. So that means community cloud, Einstein means community cloud plus the AI feature, the Einstein feature, service cloud, all these things, right? So this is about the Einstein AI cloud. So these are all certain uh, products which I have highlighted. There are multiple products as I mentioned earlier, uh, but these are the certain uh, products and cloud, these are provided by salesforce the features are provided by salesforce and on top of that if you want to write some code in particular to your business that also can be done okay now course content overview any questions till this point anything you want to ask <coughs> okay 
so i will move on everything is pretty much clear you can go ahead so thank you okay so with move on now with the course content what we will be offering here okay so there are two parts one is the admin one is the development okay so as i mentioned salesforce um, you know takes proud in telling that most of the things which you want to develop can be developed using point and click functionality so what we will be covering that will be used from the admin perspective so uh, again basics of cloud computing and salesforce which we have briefly discussed now we will go in detail uh, in the next in our sessions second one is the data modeling how the data is modeled in salesforce okay how the ui customi customization is being done how the data are managed the security features which are provided by salesforce how you can automate a business or the functionalities which you are creating how you can automate it okay so like 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 let's say if you have if you have clicked on a button and it updates one field and that field after updation you need to send a email to a customer stating that your case has been resolved something like that so the process automation can be done then the reports and dashboards is basically the data which is there and you are getting the reports out of it and the dashboard is just a tutorial representation of that report that you can get and we will talk a bit on the features of the sales and service club okay now from a dev standpoint we will dig deeper into the what is an apex language how the apex language is framed what are the you know uh, the syntax used how you can create a project all these things second one is the sql sosl so these are basically how you query from a database you might be aware of the sql query which you can fetch data similar to that salesforce has its own uh, it's more or less same but um, you can you can utilize the sql and sosl for that then visual force page which i was talking about lightning component lightning web component integrations how you integrate with third party system because a business cannot only survive with one software you take any business it cannot survive with one software right it is practically not possible so you have to integrate with third party system in order to enhance your business how to integrate with salesforce some of the limits since it is a cloud computing platform there will be certain limit enforced because we are sharing one resource we are sharing one hard drive which is not like our personal computer right it is basically a hard drive which is shared by multiple customers now there has to be limit on the usage of that particular uh, space so if let's say if due to some wrong coding which i have done uh, the the utilization of that particular hard drive takes more space that will not be beneficial for the other customers their performance will be uh, their performance will get hampered without the fault of them right so they will be providing some limits on how to test it before you send it to your production or the live environment where live customers will be interacting so how you can test it out those things how the deployment works in salesforce how you can move code from one one organization or one uh, place to another place so those things will be covered in the dev now apart from that we will be also providing you with the notes on the topics which you are providing and we will do one end to end project from uh, uh, using admin and dev so we have two classes one is basically for the admin which is the weekend class and we also will have dev and admin the details can be shared by the uh, visual uh, point of contact whoever you have so we have two classes one specific to admin another for dev and admin which we will be doing in the weekend weekdays okay admin will be done on the weekends so that is the course content and the brief overview of the classes which we are conducting and okay now let's see one project demo all about theory is done let's see one project demo so how you can so salesforce provides a platform where you can where you can uh, you know write your own code you can trade you can learn from there so it will be it will be always always be there just one minute i will wait how to do it and all that we will uh, check in later so this one which i am showing the place where you are where we are going to be building a project can also be created from your end it's free of cost 
provided by Salesforce. Okay. Fine. Okay. So now what we will do is we will create one application for the suggestion box. Okay. So let's say uh, for the feedback which is coming from the customers and for any if, if any suggestions to improve the process. So that kind of business in that business one part is this. So we will be creating this and see how it can be done. And whatever we will be creating, you will also see it. it will be done using point and click. We will today we will not go into any coding okay, because that is something which I need to explain it to you how it how the syntax works, how what are the limits if I'm think about it. So there are multiple uh, facets of that particular uh, thing which if we are doing via coding. Since Salesforce already has that rich features to do via point and click, we will do this project using point and click itself. Now, if you remember, I was talking about classic and lightning, right? Previously, classic came into picture, then visual force page, which was a page driven architecture, then we switched to lightning, all these things, right? So the one which you are seeing right now is known as lightning environment. And if I just go to this beer icon, go to switch to classic, Salesforce classic, this was the first UI which Salesforce came up with when into came into picture. So here itself, uh, if I write some code in Visual Force Space, that will be page-driven architecture. But once we are going to Lightning, the performance improves as well as the interactions. Okay, it's a component-driven architecture. Okay. So we have done with the theory. Let's go with the demo. So what I'm doing, I'm clicking on this gear icon. I'm going to this. The setup I clicked on it and I went to this part. Now what I will do this in top if you are seeing the one which I'm hovering over it is known as app launcher okay. Apps in Salesforce terminology is nothing but a folder you can think of it as a folder where you are creating the business okay? and the tabs let's say if I'm opening sales service marketing community which we talked about right so these are all there as a feature which you can browse through it. So if I go to the service, this is a folder or an app, app application from a Salesforce terminology point of view. And if you see this home, chatter, account, contact cases, these are all part of that service business or service uh, application, which will enhance the service process. So we will not go into the service cloud feature as of now. We will create our own feature, which I told you about suggestion box. Okay. So I will go back. I will go to this object manager. Yeah. I will click on create, create box. Okay. Now in this label, I will just write the name of that application which I am creating. For us, it is suggestion, right? So just go along with me. Suggestion, these are all done. This is the name which I will keep it. Okay. And then I will just allow search notes. These are all point and click, right? We are not doing any coding yet. So once this is done, so what is the tab style on all these things? We can also select the colors of it, everything. So let's say any color I'm choosing. Clicking on next. This is all you can just follow along, not needed at this point of time. So now I have created a suggestion. So if you see here, if I just type in suggestion, you see suggestions is coming, which I have just created. Now if I click on it. Services. Let it open. So I have created one object here, not the applications. Okay. So if you see, suggestion is an object which I have created. 
now with that object i have also created a tab for that okay and in that tab i have created this now if you have to create an application what we have to do you just have to go to setup it's already in setup sorry app okay now app i will go to app manager new lightning app i will click i will give the name as suggestion box okay. the application or the folder name i will give it as suggestion box developer name is something which is for the coding purpose you can give some description what it does this app is used for tracking suggestions okay you can also have the overview how it will be seen if you want to upload some image you can also do that i will just keep it as it is for us now now this application where it will be used there are different kinds of navigation whether a standard navigation or a console navigation this we will not go now but these are the places which you can personalize it now i will go next i will just click on next next everything okay and here i will select what tabs will be or what uh, you know the objects will be there so I have created one suggestion object, right? So I will just click on it, move it this side. Okay, selected items. I will click on next and I will for profiles. I will just give it as don't you no need to worry about this. What is system admin and all these things? So I will just keep it as it is and then I will save and finish. Okay. So this is done. Now if I go here, sorry. If I go here and press the page now I will go to suggestion so if you see suggestion box application is created if I click on it I have only added one tab tab you can think of it like you have you must have used Excel right in Excel you will have the tables or the sheet in that sheet what you will have in that sheet you will have rows you will have columns right so and that rows column together becomes the table like how it works in database as well so from a salesforce terminology point of view you can think of the table as the uh, you know this this particular object and the columns which are there are the fields associated with it okay so if i open now there is only one field there will only be one field which is suggestion name okay so if you remember when i created that object i have to give one name specific name Right. whether it is a name which user has to manually enter or it can be a number which is automatically created like when we create one ticket with any flipkart or amazon we will have a ticket number right so that will be automatically created not manually entered so that also can be done so this is something which need which needs to be there one particular field needs to be there so i will have this one particular field is there as of now so this is what the application looks like okay as of now this is the app, app or the folder. This is the app launcher from where you can launch that application. And this is the tabs, which is at the end of the day, it is the objects or the tables. Okay. So I hope till this point it is clear the object creation and the application creation. Any questions on this? Okay. So I will move on. So I will go to object manager again. I will go to this suggestion okay, suggestion table I will click on so if I open this you see at the right left hand side there are multiple things which are there right fields and relationships compact layouts everything so we will just go with fields so here we are creating a field okay you just click on new okay now what I will do I will there are multiple types of fields like it can be an email field phone field a relationship field relationship fields are nothing but where you have two different tables and two tables are interacting with each, with each other like how you write formulas right from one excel sheet to another excel sheet taking the data from that excel sheet right so similar to that here also we can do with the relationships okay there are currency date time date field so there are multiple types of fields which we can use based on our requirement okay so we will go with text area 
type we will choose a text area and we will write it as suggestion description so what is this what type of suggestion you want to provide so this yes. So what type of suggestions you will be providing that can be tracked by this particular field and we can also go so this is done now you can also provide a help text help text means the field what that field is doing as an end user if i'm going there and i'm seeing a suggestion description field so i might have a question as what i need to write here right so sometimes it is better to have a help text this is not mandatory but if it is provided it is good so if I write it as this will please enter the description. Okay. Now I will click on next. Or else let me give a more elaborate help text. Please enter as much information around the suggestion so we clearly understand it okay. let's give like this then click on next if i go back let's see if i missed anything or not nothing okay. next this all you can just forget for now it's sorry something to do with okay. something to do with securities okay. now if i just refresh this page and if i click on new now if you see with suggestion name another thing is coming suggestion description and beside this you are seeing an i icon right a grade a grade one i icon so if i hover over it it will display you the message which I have provided. It's like a help text for that particular field. This is not mandatory, again I'm telling, but it's basically to help the end user to write the meaningful data on this, okay? So with this, we will also create one more field quickly, and then we will uh, see. Okay, so we will create a pick list field. Okay, here, we'll go to pick list, click on next. We will give it as suggestion category. What type of suggestion it is providing? Okay. I will enter values and I will just enter the value like customer service. Okay. Service. Then employee service. Then facilities or IT. Like anything related to software. Okay, let's say some kitchen items I'm selling. So kitchen snacks if there are any issue with the kitchen snacks which I am providing to my employees and others is others. Now I will keep it as it is. Help text I am not providing as of now. If you want, you can provide it. Next. Next. Save. Now again, I will cancel this. I will refresh this page. Now, if I click on new, okay, so you see, uh, okay, it's not coming now. Why? So I have created where is the suggestion category. Let me quickly check it out. Okay, okay here it is coming, but it is not coming here. Okay, fine. I'm not sure why it is not coming on this page. It should come. But if you see here, if I go to this record, which I have created, you see a suggestion category as well. Now, if I click on edit, you see the suggestion category is coming. Here, we are having the pick list values, whatever we have provided there. Okay, so user can just click on it and save it. Okay. Ideally, this should also come when I'm clicking on this suggestion new box. I'm not sure why it is not coming now. That we will see later on. Right but this is how the feature works okay 
now apart from that if you want to add certain other fields we can also do that let's say we will add some fields for the um, status okay whether it is once the ticket is created whether it is something under new or under consideration okay so that one we will create and if it is implemented when is that particular time we will implement so one date field also we will create so two more fields we will create one is a pick list field another one is the date field okay. so similar to this i will go to pick list click on next I will give the name as status, enter values. I will give it as new under consideration, then in progress implemented. So this four I will create and the use first value I will use. Use first value as the default value. This one I will just click it. I will click on next. I will keep everything as it is click on next save and new okay so this will again move me to the page i will click on the date because i want to create a date for the implemented when it is implemented if something is implemented okay so this is a date field i will keep it everything as it is click on next next save okay now let me refresh this page let me see if it is coming in new or not it should come but i'm not sure why it is not showing coming yeah here it is not showing something is missing okay so if i go to the record right once i go to the record let's click it right this word here refresh the page I might have to log out and log in. Sometimes cache issues are also there. So if I let me create a new record. Okay. Please keep more items. This one. So suggestion name I will keep it as kitchen item availability. This is I'm just giving a availability. Please keep enough resource or items in the kitchen. I will save it out. Now here if you see, if I go to page layout, page layout is nothing but wherein you can reframe the objects or the fields which you have created. So if you want it to be in a, in a certain way, you need to keep it. You can just drag it out. Yeah, so it was some certain kind of cache issues. So if you see here, now the description and all these things are coming so implemented date if i have implemented something let me open this kitchen item availability which i have created now if i click on edit you see these are all there right category i will select it as kitchen snacks then status i will keep it as new okay and then i will save it out now let's say later point of time somebody is working on this particular part they will just keep it as under consideration or in progress under consideration means it is getting reviewed and once the review is done and it is approved it will go to in progress something like that okay and once it is implemented the status we will change it to implemented and we will just give the date okay so this this day it will be implemented something like this so this is about the suggestion box which we have created now if you want to add certain business logics right so that also we can do okay so i will uh, quickly show you that as well i think we have some time let me show you that part as well object manager okay i will go to that particular suggestion box sorry suggestion is the next box suggestion box suggestion similarly one data type is formula 
so i was talking about the business logic right this is one of one such business logic which can be implemented so we'll click formula click on next okay so i will just keep a track of the number of days open for this suggestion okay now the return type what type of type i need to return for this formula so i will keep it as number i will go here okay and then let me go back decimal places i will keep it as zero because it is in days which i need to calculate okay and i will just write one formula no need to worry about what this formula does or anything like that just follow along with it so it's basically i'm checking whether the field which i have created whether if there is a blank field or not okay so i will just insert field go here implemented date insert okay now is another fault today that is a function which is provided by salesforce you can also see from here the left hand side if you go to date i can go down this is today right so you can see what it returns it returns the current date okay comma or sorry minus date value okay date value of the created date when that this again you can insert it if you don't remember it you can just do it like this okay. Okay. this plan or else I'll let me keep it simple i will just make it as day today minus created okay. zero zeros i will keep it like this next save sorry save i did okay. now if i go here again it is cache issue Let me log out and log in again. Generally, this type of cache issues are not seen. Maybe specific to my org it is happening because it is a old org. So just do form. number of days you can see it is coming as zero because i have created this data today itself okay? and uh, so what i have given is today minus created date that's what i have given right in the formula so that is why it is coming like zero now if i go here where is that number of days open so if i just give it as today i will not be able to show you with more than zero days because that is the today if i just manipulate it a bit let's say plus five i am giving saving it so now it will come as five days so, but ideally I, I hope you got the picture so if i have created something today and tomorrow if i open this page again it will show me one day or two days as the day progresses okay so that way okay so this is how a page works now let's me write a validation rule validation rule is nothing but if you want to restrict the user to enter any incorrect data as per your business logic then uh, you need to create this rule okay. so let's say date in range i'm giving if implemented date what does this will do if implemented date is greater than today that means if I'm giving the any date which is more than today's date, okay, that will throw me an error stating that implemented date must be today or in the past. Implemented date must be today 
or it will be fast okay and i will keep it on the implemented dead field i will click on save now this is done now if you see here this one which i have created previous to this validation rule i was able to provide the date in the future there was no error thrown similarly now if i do on any existing record or any new new record if i click on save now it will throw me an error that the implemented error message which i have provided the implemented date must be today or in the past so if i am giving it as in the past let's say it will save it without any issue so this is one kind of validation rule which we talk about wherein we will be creating such fields now there are certain automation as well which we will not go today into deeper because that will take more time therein we will all we can also automatically uh, you know uh, create certain records or update certain fields okay based on some logic that also we can do there is i will just quickly show you from where we can do it so if i go here in the quick find box visual sorry flows if you go to flows So from here we can automate the business logics. We can automate certain fields. These are all we will be covering in our course later. But I hope you got the overview. Like the one which we have created is a simple application, right? But we are not writing like if you are doing any web page application, you will have to write the HTML code, the div tag. Then inside the div tag, you have to give the header you have to give the paragraph tab or if you are creating a field the input tag all these things you have to write it manually in your code but here you don't have to write you just have to point and click drag and drop and that's it that will automatically salesforce will take care of the way these names will come you can rearrange the fields right so all these things the validation rule like if you if we have just point and click we have gone through the validation rule we just write one uh, logic which we want to implement and that again will be uh, simultaneously integrated with the uh, object which we have created so i hope you got the idea that how easy salesforce is to once you understand its features and once it is done if you want on top of that some specific niche uh, you know information which you want to uh, implement in your own then again salesforce also provided that visual force lightning component those features as well okay so any questions till this point of time till this demo we will quickly wrap it up with one two more slides and before that any questions you have yeah like uh, how many projects will be involved in the whole course structure like how so many there will involved be... and finally we can make it yeah, so one project will be end to end if you are going with admin. For admin also, we have one project, separate project, one major project. And for admin and dev, we will also have one major project which will have end to end implementation from top to from initial to like from admin till dev. Okay, that is one project. And in each, apart from that, we will have three, four mini projects which we will be working on. Okay, so around uh, four or five projects if you take it like that okay but one will so be the like, one uh, will be the industry. as you told uh, so like many projects are like a few and a main project will be on based on uh, admin uh, or developer like including both. both so whichever course you are going for let's say if you're going for admin then we will have we have a separate project for admin and if you are going for admin plus dev we will have a separate project end-to-end -end project i'm talking about from the from start to finish yeah so like uh, what i'm trying to like uh, like uh, convey is like i can showcase it as my portfolio or like an yes, academic yes, project definitely. that is a practical project that's that will yeah. be a practical project yeah. any more questions Uh, pretty much nothing, but I uh, I like the way you're explaining everything, and uh, yeah, pretty much, and uh, yeah, I'm just concerned about the projects, like how many can we involve? Because as many projects involve real time experience, it would be more easily to understand. Correct, that is true. So the project which we will be having, because uh, 
the major project we cannot cover more right because we have certain limitations uh, from a time bound perspective so we will have one major project which we will be covering but I can provide you with some other project details which you can do it on your own time. That also I can help you out if you need. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. We can deal with that. Sure. So this is about the demo. Okay. And what about the pro yeah. products you'll be covering? Like so from an uh, so product perspective, as I shown you in the course overview. So the sales and service cloud products we will be covering. But the main feature, you know, uh, the out of the box functionality you can cover anytime. But the main thing is the admin part and the development if you are going, because those will be, uh, those will be there in all the products. The so products are basically nothing but the out of the box features, right? That features you can learn any point of time. Like there are so many products which Salesforce has uh, provided, and once you are going into any project that may vary from that project to project like if i'm working now in sales cloud next i can work on einstein product. but the main thing or the core thing which will be there is the admin and dev right like the one which i showed you that is basically will be covered up in every product which you are working on right so those things we will be covered product wise so, it will be no 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 commerce cloud no 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 that is uh, something totally different so feature wise as i told that is something which will be covered in separate courses not in this course this will be for ground level root level okay. which can be applied to any products okay fine so let's talk a bit about the job market and career which we are choosing so if you are choosing salesforce as a career you should know right what are the job market or the prospects of your um, technology and the career associated with it right so if you see this is a brief overview which i have created so according to international data, data corporation this is the entity where salesforce and its partners like whoever is utilizing salesforce for its business will create around 10 million jobs by 2026 so if you think about it, it's a, that's a lot, of, it's a lot of opportunities going forward, right? And Salesforce has three releases every year, right? So three releases in those three releases, they will they try to provide you with new new features and to enhance the platform or to you know based on the feedback received by the customers or the partners, they will try to enhance those parts. So three features every year with each of the you know three releases every year with each release having the features associated with it so that is like quite a good thing right and you have to if you if you if you think about it you have to be on your toes every time it's not like if you have learned today and it will go on till the next five years it's not like that even for one year even for me when i'm working on something i i have to be on my toes to see what are the new features are coming because with new features comes the opportunity of writing my or you know providing my suggestions or the designs uh, more efficiently based on the Salesforce new system. Right? So whatever I'm teaching today, admin and dev, those parts will remain the same. But as you are talking about the products, right? In the products, Salesforce also provides new new features which will be, which will be uh, beneficial. Even when I'm writing code, there might be some tags which they will introduce it to improve the performance, to improve the security for, let's say, previously I used to write one code which will take 10 lines of code now salesforce will new new release they will provide one feature which will only take one line of code, right so i need to understand that to write more code efficiently or to you know do the admin related stuff more efficiently like that so it is that okay so that is something one one thing which i want to tell you and if you see on the um just downside so what are the positions which will be there one is business analyst architect so business analyst is nothing but it's requirement gathering right so if you go to any um any projects not only salesforce any business if you go they will have a ba associated with it who will take the uh from the clients they will take the requirement and they will frame it so that the developers can work on it right so those are the works of the business analyst architects are the uh like the topmost layer the cream layer of salesforce so they will do the designs of the based on the requirement they will do suggest the designs how it will be how it can be scalable, how it can improve the performance, how to take benefits of the securities, what are the nooks and corners where it can, you know, provide some issues in the future. So all those things will be taken care by the architect. They are the 
like if you think about from a hierarchy standpoint the architect are the main uh, main topmost team of the sales force okay now comes the functional consultant so they will consult you on the functional part if if somebody is coming with a requirement and whether that can be achieved or not how easily it can be achieved what are the time frames it can be taken so functional consultant is something which goes there tech specialist are something from a code uh, you know development standpoint how the technical standpoint how how you will write the code more efficiently what are the frameworks you will use while writing it all these things ux designer ux designer is from a ui perspective like lightning component lightning web component visual force page all these things we have covered right so this whoever is particularly uh, you know expertise in that particular part how to design that part will be taken care by the ux designer roles now devs admins these are these are like roles which can be uh, extrapolated in every any business which you are writing on salesforce platform and designers are nothing but designing as a from an admin perspective or the back end logic all these things okay now coming to the demographic where on where all salesforce is uh, left its footprint as of now okay so if you see uh, can i zoom it no Okay, so I will just read it out. So software around 33 percentage, 32.8 percentage is being utilized. Uh, uh, software industry utilizes Salesforce. Business services utilizes Salesforce. Manufacturing, finance, finance means HDFC Bank is one of its client. Then media and internet, telecom industries, retail, healthcare. So if you see all the segments, more or less has utilized or will be utilizing Salesforce because of the uh easiness of which they provides us to write the code you don't have to write code as it is if you don't want it you can utilize the features and then build on top of that right so this is overall on if you if you think about it the the demographics or the industry which you will work on every industry more or less uses salesforce at this point of time the job opportunities are there going forward and of course salaries compared to uh compared in the job market salaries of uh, salesforce uh, developer admin or architect are higher than the salaries of its competitors if you just do some research on that okay that is there and in india it is specifically a growing market as of now there are more products which are coming which is being taken care by more the customer base is improving for salesforce that is in turn uh, you know the competition is more because if you just do a research there are uh, opportunities are more but the talent in terms of the expertise right so that is very less so even when supply is more uh, less and uh, demand is more at time obviously the you know the the salaries will also be uh, play a role crucial role in that part okay so that is one point i want to cover and certifications yeah so salesforce has multiple certifications okay which can be used uh, basically the certification will help you in terms of uh, building your resume more stronger because once the hr scans the resume they will see whether you have expertise or not so they cannot see from the resume right once before you interact it is like a gateway so if you have let's say a platform developer one or platform developer two or advanced admin admin all this kind of certification if you have the hr will understand okay so he has the understanding of the admin he has been certified by salesforce by this and that is a good way of filtering out the resumes so it's more like a gateway the certifications you have will open up doorway for you to get the interview but after the once you get the interview it's up to you on showing your talent of how much you have covered or not right so certification also plays a role in terms of getting job opportunities because if i just write that i ha- i am good at salesforce development it will i just think about it if i write like this and somebody else is writing that i am platform developer one certified so which one will carry more weightage it's something which salesforce has certified that this candidate has expertise of right so that way so there are multiple certification i have just given some basic certifications here related to admin developer certification but there are multiple other certification as well which you can okay so with this i will conclude my session any questions you have let me know i will just keep this forum open for another 5 minutes i already took more time of yours sorry for that uh, like uh, how many days like how many what is the duration of this around 5 6 weeks we will be covering 5 6 weeks okay 5 6 weeks okay
and one more thing if you don't mind like uh, yeah. uh, to do the certifications uh, will like we will get help from you like or like you should be doing by us ourselves uh yeah certification is uh, like you need to prepare from yourself only but the topics which we will be covering that 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 is only what you need to prepare so uh, as of now our concentration is more from a teaching standpoint but if the need arises if more people show interest in certification we will try to cover that as well but all in all the topics will be covered whatever topics will be there that will be covered from an admin and developer certifications yeah standpoint. i understand yeah got it And also the class duration will be around one one and a half hours only time. Like weekdays one one and a half hours and weekend around one and a half hours to two hours for admin batches. And uh, one more thing, uh, not to bother you. And uh, yeah. like, uh, what is your like? Uh, what's your qualifications are like? We just wanna know like. So I'm working as an architect now. Okay. In one thing, so I started with being a consultant, and then I moved on to developer, then lead, then manager, then architect. Like that. Yeah. So around Thank thirteen you, years, I have experience in Salesforce office. So now, from initial days only, I worked on Salesforce. I have seen Salesforce grow from when it was classic, when this Visual Force was only there. From that time, I have been. Yeah. Appreciate that. Okay then, so I think that's all. I will wrap this session up. In case of any further queries, just reach out to our team. Um, I will I will follow up with them and uh, I will answer it if required. Okay. Thank you so much for your time.